Volume 1, Introduction to the Tao Te Ching, including the first three chapters and explanations. The Tao Te Ching is a Chinese classic text and the foundation of Taoism. The text is traditionally credited to the sage Lao Tzu, also known as Lao Zi. The Tao Te Ching describes the Tao as the source and ideal of all existence. It is unseen, but not transcendent, immensely powerful, yet supremely humble, being the root of all things. Although the text's authorship, date of composition, and compilation are debated, it is generally credited to Lao Tzu. The writing starts by trying to describe the Tao, the way, by stating that the written word cannot fully encompass the real thing. The workings of the way are hidden behind what we can observe. If we want to see beneath the surface into what really makes up the world, we have to detach ourselves from the attraction of that surface. When we distance ourselves from the world as if we are not at all a part of it, then we can see through it. The mystery of its true nature becomes evident. Tao Te Ching, Chapter 1 The Tao that can be stated is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. The unnamed is the origin of heaven and earth. The named is the mother of the myriad things. Therefore, Free from desire you see the mystery, full of desire you see the manifestation. These two have the same origin but differ in name. That is the secret, the secret of secrets. In chapter 2, the Tao Te Ching presents a consequence of what is stated in the first chapter. Because the opposites of existence are united in a necessary whole, it's detrimental to separate them, either in deed or in value. The unity of the opposites makes up the world. We should not call one good and the other bad. There is no point in telling them apart at all, since they cannot exist divided, nor do they make any sense when separated from one another. We often call some things good and others bad, but fail to recognize that such opposites are also deeply dependent on one another. Judging between them has little meaning. The prickled stem leads up to the flower of the rose. A forest is rejuvenated by fire, as is the soil by the merciless turn of the seasons. Just as night brings repose from the day and death gives room for new life, one is in need of the other. When the world knows beauty as beauty, ugliness arises. When it knows good as good, evil arises. Thus being and non-being produce each other. Difficult and easy bring about each other. Long and short reveal each other. High and low support each other. Music and voice harmonize each other. Front and back follow each other. Therefore, what is and what is not create each other. Difficult and easy complement each other. Tall and short shape each other. High and low rest on each other. Voice and tone blend with each other. First and last follow each other. So, the sage acts by doing nothing, teaches without speaking, attends all things without making claim on them, works for them without making them dependent, demands no honor for his deed, because he demands no honor, he will never be dishonored. Society is obsessed with the eagerness to change. Today we call it progress, as if that change is always for the better. We encourage impatience and hurry onward, convinced that letting go of the past will bring an increasingly splendid future. This is doomed to escalate and accelerate until we have no time at all to compare our innovations with what they replace. We don't know if they are improvements. Chapter 3 Do not glorify the achievers, so the people will not squabble. 
Do not treasure goods that are hard to obtain, so that people will not become thieves. Do not show the desired things, so their hearts will not be confused. Therefore, the sage governs by emptying senses and filling bellies, curbing strife and strengthening backs, keeping the people ignorant and without desire, making the learned afraid to act. If he acts without action, order will prevail.